Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 7, Differential Equations. Today's topic is 7.4, Reasoning Using Slope Fields. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 7.4, Reasoning Using Slope Fields. Uh, we're going to jump right in. Uh, this type of problem is asking us to identify the particular solution that goes through a point. So we're trying to figure out how, if they give us a slope field, how do we, what, what can, sort of reasoning can we uh, do given that slope field? Um, so for number one, the figure to the right shows the slope for a differential equation dy dx is equal to 1 minus xy. Sketch the graph of a particular solution that contains 0 comma 2. Label this point as point A. So first off, let's go to 0 comma 2. So 0 comma 2 is going to be right here. We are going to label that as point A. That is our A that's right here. Um, so if we're talking about the, the sketch the graph of a particular solution, we're trying to sketch it. Um, what we're going to keep in mind is this idea that we did in our 7.3 lesson, where essentially the slope field is sort of like a current. It's almost like waves, where this point is being moved along the waves and it's following the current. Um, and those little slopes where our, the function that we're going to draw is going to be parallel to each of those slopes at each individual point that it goes through. So an example of this might be, well, we notice that this has a positive slope, so it's going to increase. And then we notice that at some point it becomes a negative slope, so it's going to start decreasing. And we're going to follow that current along to the side. And so for me, at this point, I am seeing something that sort of looks like this. And then it starts to go downwards. And then it starts looks to level out here at this point. So I, I'd expect to see something like this going to the right for that function. To the left from that point, the current seems to be pushing it downwards. And then it's sort of leveling off as it goes more and more to the left. And so I'm seeing something that looks like this. And we see that the slopes decrease, it's getting more horizontal, it's getting closer towards zero, and then it looks like that. It can't go below this point, because at a certain point it looks like these slopes would push it back up to this point, and if we're going above it, it would be going down. So it looks like no matter what, it's being pushed towards sort of where this line is. But this would be a sketch of uh, the particular solution that goes through this point. Um, it might not be exact, but, you know, it's, we're following those slopes and we're getting something that, that works pretty well for it. But again, the big idea here is that we're following the current. So follow the current is the goal when you're trying to draw this particular solution. Um, let's do the second one. So B says sketch the graph of a particular solution that contains the point negative 1 comma negative 2. Uh, and we're going to draw that graph. So negative 1 comma negative 2 would be down about right here. We're labeling that as our B, and we're trying to draw that particular solution as well. So as I go to the right, I notice it's got a negative slope, and then it appears to have a slope that becomes and changes positive. So we're starting to go upwards and increase and increase and increase, and the slope starts to getting closer to zero, looking like it's approaching that line as well to the right. To the left, it's got that negative slope. And as we see, it's starting to level out and get a little bit closer to zero. I'm seeing something like that as well. So it's interesting that these two points, or these two solutions, regardless of like where I'm starting, seem to be going towards that uh, this like horizontal line over here on the left and this horizontal line here on the right. Um, and that might be something that, that has to do with this particular function. Um, but those would be my sketches for this uh, this different the slope field that we've got here for this. Um, and depending upon whatever points starting points that they give you, you might have something that looks slightly different. Uh, if they gave you different starting points. For problem number two, the slope field for a certain differential equation is shown to the right. Which of the following could be a solution to the differential equation with the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 0? So they're giving us a point here that's going to go through 0, comma 0. And so if I take a look at that, that's going to be this point right here. So what do I notice? What am I looking for in this particular problem? Well, we talked about in our, in our last uh, video that when I'm looking at a, a slope field, frequently what I'm looking for is places where the slope is zero or it's undefined. So, for example, I notice that the slope is zero on all of these values 
when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, we see that dy dx is equal to zero. The slope is zero here. Here, we actually have no slopes at these. And that's really interesting because the ones to the left and the right look vertical. So these are places to me where it looks like actually the slope is undefined at negative two. And that's actually really useful to know is notice as well. So what I'll notice is that when x is equal to negative two, it appears that dy dx is undefined. It's like it's got an infinite slope. It's going straight up. And because it's undefined, there's no actual slope at those, at those points. So using these two pieces of information, I might be able to go ahead and take a look at these functions and see whether it makes sense that we would have uh, these specific values. So how could we reason and try to figure out which of these is it, it's gonna be? In this case, again, we can use these two pieces of information here to figure out uh, which of uh, these functions it could be uh, given this particular slope field. So what I'm gonna notice here is, uh, first off, you know, I would expect that at negative two that we would have an undefined value, and when x is zero, we would have a derivative of zero. If we look at this particular function, this is interesting because if we plug zero in for both of these, we do get zero, which, which would work uh, for that. Um, but what I notice about this x squared here is that this would be undefined, right? The denominator would be equal to zero at both two and negative two. So the negative two is good because we'd expect it to be undefined, but at two, we're not actually seeing anything that's undefined here. It has an actual value. So because of that, it cannot be A for that. Similarly, for C, if I plug in, uh, you know, for example, the point zero comma zero, you know, if we plug in zero here, we would expect zero, so we'd have zero is equal to e to the zero plus two, so zero would be equal to e squared, and that's not true as well. So that does not make sense given uh, what we know from our slope field here. Um, if we jump down to c, you know, we might recognize or we might remember from pre-calculus that tan of x uh, is this periodic function that sort of looks like this. It, it repeats this like same thing over and over again. But one of the defining features of tan of x is it has a bunch of asymptotes. It has a lot of places where it's undefined that happen repeatedly uh, as the x values increase and decrease over time. So these are places where I'd expect this function to be undefined, any places where there are asymptotes in this. Um, and so because of that, I'd expect lots and lots of undefined uh places to repeat here, which I'm just not seeing. So B would not make sense uh, for this as well. That leaves us sort of process of illumination that it has to be D here for this. And then again, you know, does that make sense? If we plug in zero for this, we're seeing, okay, if we plug in zero, it's zero over two, hey, that's zero, that makes sense. And then if we plug in negative two, we actually do see that it's undefined, that there's no actual values for that function uh, there for that. So I think D makes the most sense based on these two pieces of information that we've got. And again, process of elimination, just sort of interpreting the, the slope field as much as we can is the way to go. For number three, Consider the differential equation dy dx is equal to x plus 1 over y, and its slope field shown over here on the side. Describe all points in the xy plane for which dy dx is equal to negative 1. So where do we see places where the slope is negative 1? Slope of negative 1 would be going where we're going down 1, right 1, right? If we think about the rise over the run is equal to negative one. So we'd be looking for a slope line that looks something like this here in purple. And what I'm seeing over here is I'm seeing that looks like that's occurring about right here on this pink line that we've got here, that we're seeing these values of a slope here of negative one. So how would we describe those points? How would we describe these points? Well, I noticed that they're all in a straight line they appear to be forming actually a linear function themselves. And what is that linear function if we're thinking about it? If we're thinking about, you know, back in the day, our y equals mx plus b, our y-intercept of this, this uh, line that we've got here appears to be negative 1, and the slope of this line is negative 1 as well. So I could describe this as all of the points 
that fall on the line y is equal to negative 1x minus 1. So this would be all of the points that fall on the line negative 1x minus 1. And so that would be uh, this equation here. Now, one way that we could do that, if for some reason, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I can't figure it out. One other thing that we could possibly do is we could say, hey, we actually do know what the differential equation here is. We know that the slope, is need the dy dx needs to equal negative 1. And so what we could say here is that actually negative 1 has to equal that x plus 1 over y. Right? Negative 1 is equal to that x plus 1 over y. They're both equal to dy dx, so they have to be equal to each other. Well, how would I get this y by itself to make this equation? I'd multiply the y to both sides, so that gives me negative y is equal to x plus 1. And then to get that y by itself, we could divide by negative 1 on each side, which would give us y is equal to negative x minus 1, which is the same thing as this, right? Negative 1x is the same thing as negative x. And so this is a different way that we could find that from using the equation itself if we're having trouble interpreting the slope field in this case. Great. Let's try number four, last problem for today. Explain why the following could not be a slope field for the differential equation dy over dt is equal to negative 0.3y. So what do we notice? What do we notice here uh, for this? We notice that for this uh, differential equation that it only is changing when y is changing. I notice that there is no x. There is no x in the differential equation, or t in this case, depending upon what your horizontal thing is. This might be x, might be t. Since it's dy dt, it's probably t we're talking about here. Um, but there's no x or t in this differential equation, which means that as the x values or t values change, I would not expect the, uh, the slope to change. Right? Because though if the y value stays the same at different points, then you should have the same value going across. What I'm talking about here, for example, is if I take a look at like this line here at 5, going straight across. Right? If I take a look at some of these points, right? This is the point 0, 5. Over here we've got like 1, 5, we've got 2, 5, we've got 3, 5, we've got all these things, 5. Right, this is the line y equals 5. What I notice here is, yeah, they're all f the y values are all 5s. And if this is what my differential equation is, it shouldn't matter what the x is or what that first coordinate point is. We should get the same slopes for all of those y values. And what I notice is that the slopes are actually changing. So that means that it actually like the x value uh, changes the slope, which means there should be an x in that differential equation for this. So there are a couple things that we that we might uh, mention here. For me, the reason why this wouldn't be a slope field uh, or, or a slope for this differential equation, one reason we could say is because the uh, the slope field, so the slope field changes when y stays the same. but x changes. So the differential equation, I'm going to say diff eq, the differential equation, would need a y in it. So that's one possible answer that we could put. A different thing that you might notice here is, again, we sometimes want to think again about where the slope would be equal to 0. Well, for this particular equation, we would expect the slope to be equal to zero anytime the y is equal to zero. So the y being zero would be anything that's on this line down here. It would be anything that's on this line that's down here, uh, here in yellow. And so what do I notice? Well, I notice that these are all places where y is equal to zero, but the slope is not zero for all of these. So a different answer that I could put for this particular one is I could say, okay, when y is equal to zero, the slope, or I could say the slope or dy dx 
or dy dt should be zero, but it isn't on the slope field. So a couple different arguments you could possibly make. These are both good ones, right? Again, I'm noticing horizontally that's changing as the x value is changing and there's no x or t in this equation. So this can't be the differential equation for this graph. Similarly, if I'm thinking about when this slope should be zero, that's when uh, y is equal to zero. And when y equals zero, the slope is not always zero. So you could make a couple of different arguments, but that's an example of two different ones you could make. Either one of those would be fine in this particular problem. Nice. Um, so that's going to be it for today. Our practice problems, uh, we've got some that we're going to try. Try those out, check your solutions, and please check in with your teacher uh, if you've got any questions as you're going through. Have a great rest of your day.